All right, so today's lesson is 9.3. We're going to look at intersection of lines and planes. So we have a little investigation. Cardboard is a plane, and this is the line. You can use a pencil if you want. I wrote pencil on the, the handout. But it says, how could the line and the plane, looking at uh, question two there, how could the line and the plane be oriented to produce a system with exactly one solution? So there's lots of ways you can do this. Like this, 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 right? <laughs> anyway, so that they intersect. All right. Number three says, how could the line be oriented to produce a system with an infinite number of solutions? That's easy right on top, however you want. As long as the line lies on the plane, you're going to get an infinite number of solutions. And lastly, how could the line and plane be oriented to produce a system with no solutions? That. Or this. As long as the, um, the line is parallel to the plane, you'll get no solutions. Now, the next interesting thing, question number five, says, how would the direction vectors of the lines and the normal vectors of the planes be related to each other? Okay, so I have nice diagrams here compared to my cardboard and pen. Okay. Now, if you had a normal vector here, right, it, there's really no relation there. It'll be at some angle theta, and it will be different for any kind of line that you could have. However, for case two and three, whether or not your line is parallel to the plane or lies on the plane, it will be perpendicular to the normal. And that's a good point, which we're going to come back to. So let's see how we would do this. There's going to be two methods. So let's go over those two methods. Determine points of intersections between this line which we have in a parametric form already given to us, and the plane we have right there in scalar form. Okay, method one. Method one is fairly straightforward. For method one, we are simply going to substitute our parametric equations into our equation for the plane. So let's start with the equation for the plane. Here's our plane. And we have 2x. So instead of x, I'm going to substitute the parametric equation, 2 plus t. So we're going to have 2 plus t. And then minus 5y, where y is 2 plus 2t. Okay, so 2 plus 2t. And finally, plus z, where z is 9 plus 8t. 9 plus 8t. And then minus 6 equals 0. So I can bring the 6 to the other side of the equation. All right, now our goal is simply to solve for t. So we're going to expand and simplify. So here we'll get 4 plus 2t minus 10 minus 10t plus 9 plus 8t equals 6. And if you collect like terms, probably realizing there's already a problem here, because 2t and 8t give you 10t, and then minus 10t. That's actually giving you 0t. And if you solve your uh, constants, you would get 0t equals negative 3. Well, that means no solution. Can't find a solution to that one. But if there was a solution, you'd be able to find it there. And we'll go over an example on the back of the handout later where we would be able to find a solution. But in this case, no solution. All right, so that means it is um, case two. The line is parallel to the plane, but not on it. So we don't have one solution. We certainly don't have an infinite number of solutions. Well, let's look at method two. How could we figure this out with method two? Method two goes to the idea that I talked about that um, the normal will be perpendicular to the line 
if the line is either on the plane or parallel to the plane. So we can test that right away. We can take a direction vector for the line and do the dot product with the normal for the plane and see if it equals zero. All right, so our direction vector, we are going to take um, our coefficients for t. So here we have 1, 2, and 8. So we have 1, 2, and 8. And we're going to dot our normal vector, which are, which are our coefficients for x, y, and z in the equations for the plane. So here we have 2, negative 5, and 1. So 2, negative 5, and 1. Okay. Then we do the dot product. So 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times negative 5, negative 10. And then 8 times 1 is 8. So that is actually going to give us 0. All right, so that means that the line is parallel to the plane. But it could also mean that the line is actually on the plane. So this is either case 2 or case 3. So how can we test which one it actually is? So what we're going to do is we're going to take the point 2, 2, 9, which is a known point that we have for the line, and we are going to see if that point is also on the plane. If it's on the plane, then we know the line lies on the plane. If it's not, then we know the line does not lie on the plane. Okay, so I can take those and I'm going to do it right here. Substitute them in for our point x, y, and z on our plane. So we have 2 times x, which is 2, minus 5 times our y coordinate right there, 2, plus z, which is a 9. And then, of course, we have this minus 6 still here. Okay, so the question is, does that equal 0? So let's test this. This is going to equal, I'm just analyzing the left side of the equation here, so 4 minus 10 plus 6, oh, sorry, plus 9 minus 6, and that's going to equal negative 3. So no, it does not equal 0. So that means the line does not lie on the plane. Therefore, no solution. The line is parallel to the plane. No solution. So the line is parallel to the plane. So our next example says, without solving, determine if the following line intersects the plane. Now this is where your skills on being able to graph planes is going to come in handy. So notice the equation for the plane does not have a y variable. Now if it doesn't have a y variable, that means the plane is parallel to the y-axis. Well, what about this direction vector for the line? Is that direction vector for the line parallel to the y-axis? Absolutely not. Therefore, it would intersect the plane because they're not parallel. So it's like a quick sort of um, interpretation you can get just by looking at it. Now, obviously, just by looking at it, you can't figure out where they intersect. You're going to have to do the math for that. But it's, it's one of the reasons why I taught you how to um, sketch a plane. So let's go over some of the examples on the back then. So our first example says determine the points of intersection or point or points. We don't know. It could be one or infinity uh, between this line, which we have in a vector form, and this plane here, if any exist. Because there might not be any either. Maybe we have those three cases. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is take that vector form, and I'm going to put it into parametric form. So we'll have x equals, so 3 plus s, and then y is 1 minus 4s, and z is 2 minus 8s. Okay, and just following with method 1, I can take these and substitute them in for x, y, and z in the equation for our plane. 
and we'll see if we can solve for s or not. So I'm going to do that up over here. So we have 4 times x, which is 3 plus s, plus 2 times y, which is 1 minus 4s, and finally minus z, which is 2 minus 8s, and I'll, I'll bring the 8 to the other side of the equation there. Right, so expand, we get 12 plus 4s plus 2 minus 8s minus 2 plus 8s. And if we collect all of our like terms, you'll have 4s equals negative 4, or s equals negative 1. So we're able to solve for one value of s. So that's great. So then where is that point of intersection? To figure that out, what we need to do is go back to our parametric equation and substitute s. So for x, you have 3 plus s, which is 3 plus s s is negative 1, so 3 minus 1, we get 2. Over here you have 1 minus 4 times negative 1, which is 1 plus 4, because of the double negative, we get 5. And then same thing here, 2 minus, we get a double negative 8, I forgot the 8, now let's do this, times negative 1, which is 2 plus 8, gives us 10. Therefore our point of intersection is the point 2, 5, and 10. All right, so example two. Again, same question. Here we have a line. It's in um, vector form. And we want to see if there are any intersections, and if there are, what, what they are. All right, so again, uh, let's do this one with both methods. We can start off with the first method. And... I'll put our vector form into parametric equations here. I'll just do it down here. I ran out of, I used that space up above. So for x, we have 3 plus 14s. For y, we have minus 2 minus 5s. And for z, we have 1 minus 3s. And we're going to substitute those into the equation for a plane. And I'm just going to run over this question. All right, so we have x, which is 3 plus 14. S plus y, where y is minus 2 minus 5s uh, plus 3z, where z is 1 minus 3s. And I'll bring the 4 to the other side of the equation. Okay. So expand. We really only need to expand that last bracket there. That's okay. Oops. This should be negative. Minus 2. Minus 5s. Right. And expanding the last bracket. Plus 3. And 3 is negative 3 is minus 9s. Equals 4. Okay. Now here's the exciting thing. If you look at the s's, you have 14s, negative 5s, and negative 9s. So you do get 0s, similar to our, our very first example on the previous page. But then if you collect all of your um, constants, we have 3 minus 2 plus 3. If you bring them to the other side of the equation, you get... Right, so 0s equals 0. What this is telling us is that there's an infinite solution. Infinite number of solutions. Okay, whereas on the previous example, on the previous page, we got, um, I think it was 0t equals negative 3. That just means you couldn't solve for t. Okay. This is a more interesting case. And let's Let's prove it again using our second method so that we can see it in both ways. 
I didn't really do the second method for um, the first example because all it would do is tell us that the dot product is not zero, they're not parallel, so you'd have to just go back and do the first method anyways to figure out that point of intersection. But if we do the second method for this one, we're going to do the dot product. Let me change my color here. Of a direction vector of the line, which is right there. with a normal to the plane. So direction vector to the line is 14, negative 5, and negative 3. And for the plane, the normal would be those coefficients for x, y, and z, which would be 1, 1, and 3. All right, so that's going to equal 14 times 1 is 14. Negative 5 times 1 is negative. 5 and 3 times 3 is 9. So we do get m dot m equals 0. So that does mean that, um, okay, so we have the line as parallel to the plane. We just don't know if the line lies on the plane or not. So to determine that, we use a different color. And we'll look at the point that is on the line and we'll see is that point also on the plane. So we're going to sub into those values into x, y, and z. And if the equation is still true, then we're good. I'll go down here and do it. So we have 3 for x uh, plus negative 2 for y and plus 3 times z, which is 1. Okay, can't really see the equation here. But x plus y plus 3z, where x is 3, y is negative 2, and z is 1. And then we still have that minus 4 equals 0. So minus 4 equals 0. So does left side truly equal 0? Well, 3 subtract 2 is 1, plus 3 is 4, minus 4 is 0. So yes, it works. So the line um, lies on the plane. Okay, so for example number three, it says determine points of intersection between this line, which is already in parametric form, and the plane. Now look at that plane. It just says x equals negative three. So that's cool. It looks like it might be confusing, but I've taught you how to figure out what that plane is. It's not very not very difficult. It's just your um, yz plane at the point x equals 3. So all I really have to do is substitute in x from our parametric equation into our plane, just like we normally would, and when we get 2 minus s equals minus 3. All right then, solve for s, so s equals 5. Now that you have s equals 5, you can figure out um, what your coordinates for y and z are. You know it's what x is. x is negative 3. Right? So let's try this. So y equals negative 1 plus 3 times s, which is 5, which is negative 1 plus 15. So we're going to get 14. And z equals 4 minus 2 s, where s is 5. So that's 4 minus 10, you get negative 6. So your point of intersection then is negative 3 for x, 14 for y, and negative 6 for z. There you go. We're all half. So in the classwork problems, you'll notice that here is question 3. It says, for the following, determine points of intersections between the given line and the plane, if any exist. So we're given a um, vector form here, which you can turn into parametric and substitute into the plane, if method one is your favorite method. But then part B gives you this. Now this you've never seen before. This is called a symmetric equation of a line. And all you do is take your um, parametric equations, and for each parametric equation, you solve for that scalar multiple. For example, t. And then you just equate t equals t equals t. So for example, 
right? If you have x equals 1 plus 4t, you just solve for t, so it would be x minus 1, and then divide it by 4, and that would be t. Okay? And that's what they give you right here, x minus 1 over 4. So you can just set that then equal to t and go backwards to figure out what your parametric equation is. It's the same with um, the next one. Here you have y plus 2 over negative 1. So what that means is y plus 2 over negative 1 equals t. Rearranging, you get y equals uh, negative 2 minus t. Okay, multiply both sides by negative 1, and then take that negative 2 and bring it to the other side. Same with this one, z minus 3. Okay, we can do that. So z minus 3 equals t. Rearranging, z equals 3 plus t. Right, so you can take your symmetric equations and easily just rearrange them to get back your parametric equations. I just wanted to show you that because you haven't seen symmetric equations before and I didn't want you freaking out.